Hello, you're listening to Hipstock. I'm your host, as always, Gav. Joining me today is Papa Stu. How are you doing? How good, you doing, Gav. Uh, well, good. Not as good as it could have been considering Hibs' performance, but yeah, we're recording this straight after the game. Um, but yeah, how you, before, before we get into Hibs briefly, how are you getting on? I'm fine, Gav. Um, I, <laughs> I would have had a good day, but no, that that was just after that football. Yeah, I'm a wee bit. A wee bit hungover now. Uh, just, <laughs> Already, just I ah, just with a, just with the football watched um, with tonight, but um, I can talk about that. Yeah, uh, we're getting to the game. Yeah, uh, um, it's been I've it's a good, been a good weekend for me. I've been watching a lot of American football. It's um, playoff season for those that can watch will know understand and understand. But uh, my team, the Jags, are absolutely nowhere near the playoffs. Um, bottom, so first draft pick. But nah, really, really, it's exciting watching it. And some. One of the first years I've properly gotten into American football, so I enjoying love, that. I love the name, the Jags. Yeah, Jacksonville Jaguars. Is it the Jaguars? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I've, I've been uh, cleaning my two... You've been watching that. I've been cleaning my two uh, garages, out, and I've got a big skip in front of the house, and uh, that's been my weekend, so... Yeah. I didn't have the lower back for doing stuff like that, uh, cleaning stuff into a skip, but anyway. But yeah, um, let's get into the Hibs game. Uh, obviously, Celtic 2, Hibs nil. Um, like I said, we're going to get into a bit more depth, and, but just sort of brief overall sort of thoughts. Well, we all went into the the game just like well, all of us. I can't believe that just showing the goal <laughs> on Sky Sports News. <laughs> oh dear, dear, dear. Um, yeah, we we went into the game um, all excited um, because of Maloney and the way he's been playing, and I think we've I think is. You know, as I said earlier, we're hung over, and I, I, I just think I just think we were awful, awful cautious and safe. Yeah, a bit, a bit too. Like I, I was watching the game, you were saying you put it well. Maybe a bit, a bit too much respect from, yeah. from Maloney and from Hibs in general. Uh, and which I mean, to be fair, I know you made the point Maloney an ex-Celtic guy, maybe respect Celtic too much, but this is becoming a bit of a habit. Hecky done it, maybe not so much Neil Lennon, but. Um, uh, Jack Ross done it. Just a bit too much respect to the old form, but Celtic in particular recently. Yeah, we we, we seem to give them uh, respect and and understand that. However, just looking at uh, Maloney standing there uh, before we kicked off, and uh, he has got. I, I know. Come on, he, you've he's got to have respect. I but, think I think we're daft. But I do think he's the next Celtic manager. Yeah, if he hits. You know the ground running and does well at Easter Road. You know you could be talking three, four, five years. He could be the next manager, and I've seen him, and he must have a lot, a lot of thoughts and great thoughts because he he, he had a lot of years at Celtic, and you could see him. You know, he, you know, and I bet you the the Celtic fans were were you know chatting away at him as well, and you know applauding him. So. I'm not saying that he never put everything into the game tonight, but I still think that they gave Celtic too much respect and you've seen it in their play because that was not the way that we played in our last game you yeah. know, against Aberdeen. You know, we we're, were high pressing. And I know we're at Parkhead, but you can still do it. As I said to you, it's the same size as the park. The only difference is, okay, better players, but the difference is, You've got sixty thousand fans there. Yeah, but these players have got to adapt to that, and they've done it before. When um, I remember being at the game when it was four two against us, um, Boyle and Cumberry, we were playing, and that was under Jack Ross. We played really well, um, but we we were pressing them high, but we never done that today. Yeah, it was it was the pass back, pass back, pass across the field. We were we went back to a, a Jack Ross of old, but we had a lot of. You know, we had a lot of play, but we weren't going anywhere. Aye, in our own half. Um, like I said, we'll, we'll go through this sort of play-by-play play and kind of um, talk about some of this stuff a bit more as we go through. Uh, talk, starting off with the team selection, I mean, when, when the team came out, there was a lot of speculation online and the, like, the group chats and stuff were in, sort of saying, how are we setting up? Um, I put out on social media saying, is it a 5-3-2 or uh, maybe a 4-3-3? And I put the graphic up for the 5 3 2 and got a lot of sticks saying about Dre Wright playing left wing back, but he played there in the second half, so get off my back. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, it, um, it was, it was, it turned out to be like a, sort of maybe a diamond, uh, 4 well, 3 1 2. Sort we of sort of thing. noticed that, didn't we? Aye. When we were watching it, we were, you know, we we're talking about it and looking at it, and it did look that we were playing a diamond. 
But then at the same time, Doig wasn't getting forward as nearly as much as Cadden. Campbell was going out to the left wing and sort of playing in that, covering that area. It was a strange one. It didn't seem a bit I No disrespect to, to, to Neil, but I don't think that was his type of game tonight. I, I don't think that he suits the type of play that we're going to play. And I, and I just think that with him playing showed that we were playing a, a very, very safe game. Yeah. Because he's never played under Maloney. I don't think you know he's not. No, he's played not. United, didn't he? You know what? I can't remember. <laughs> it's been that long time ago with you know with COVID, but the high press and Newell doesn't fit into that that uh, team. Mm. I'm, I'm sorry to say, it, I'd rather have yeah. Scotty Allen in there than Newell because all Newell does was just pass the ball back. Yeah, we had a free kick about near last third, maybe about twenty five yards out. Yeah, last third. And we ended up back at Macy. Aye, aye. You know, so that's what, you know, that's really what gets me, Gav. Um, that's what gets me. Because we, we're on the attack and we would have done that against, we wouldn't have done that against Aberdeen. I just keep on going to the Aberdeen game because we'll... Uh, it's, it's, two, it's only two games we've got to compare to in terms yeah, of the Malay. Yeah, and this passing it all the way back, you know. So mm. I don't think, in my opinion... And you know I'm not you know I'm not as good as Maloney and all these other managers. I'm just saying, I don't think that Newell is in that category of Maloney's team. Mm. I mean, I, I I have to say I think I understand why you're you're sort of going for Newell because that's one of the the talking points I had. The the the, the Newell's performance it's been criticised quite a bit, but at the same time I have to say I think it was the the, the team performance kind of and told me that that was an instruction across the board. There was a lot of players doing that, and I don't I like where they would get the ball and there would be an opportunity to pass forward, but they were playing it safe and passing it back to Hanlon, and um, I, it just seemed a bit um, safe safe a lot of times. But, I mean, in terms of the, the, the start of the game, it started a bit more positively. Boyle driving forward, um, flipped a lovely ball to Cadden, who got a great cross in, first-time cross, and it came in this bit. <laughs> How does he not score that? I mean, goes with the outside is his right foot. Just smash it on your left foot. I mean, I, I, you know, I, I told you, I told you at the time, he is a centre forward, and that should be in the back of the net. You know, a ruthless centre forward, an Ali McCoy. You know, you can go right through the over the years. A ruthless centre forward would have that would have been in the back of the net, and then. Was it Drew Wright at the back post? Yeah, let tries to leave it to go in. I've I've told you as well. I played centre forward, and I would have took that goal. I would have I would have stole it off in this bit and put that in, and gladly took the goal and stuck the fingers up in this bit and said, it's "My goal. I scored it. I touched it last. That's my goal." Yeah. But he's, he he pulls back and lets it go in, but it hits the post, and before we know it, it's bounced out and. They go up the park. Aye. A minute and a half later. I wasn't even as much as that. It was that? like forty seconds. You know, deja vu at Hamden. Um, you know, us. You know, having a chance to well, obviously scoring yeah. at, at Hamden, but um, Celtic going up the park. Uh, Hibs actually have the ball. It's, it's a doig plays it forward to Campbell. Um, about a third of the way, halfway through our own pitch, and takes too much time on the ball. Dispossessed too easily. Um, I mean, there's a couple of points. For, I think from this, I think. Celtic play this high press. We, we should know that. We should know you can't take that much time in the ball as Josh Campbell did. But at the same time, you've got to be prepared for losing the ball because that's the way Celtic play. They're going to try and win the ball high up the pitch. It's obviously early in the game, but Hanlon and Rocky just completely divided. Where was, uh, where was Rocky? Yeah. I mean, like you say... That, <laughs> I don't know. We, My sons think that someone photoshopped Rocky out because he was missing that much. And then you checked the time, and you said, "Where was what about the time?" Aye, and it was a, a, a like a second and and a, a millisecond. And he was just coming out. back into the photo, so it was probably wasn't back. he? So he probably wasn't he, but he was he was away playing right back. Ah, oh, aye. Whereas if he was over, he might have been able to block it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I say, too, too much time on the ball, too much like um, inviting that that pressure played into their hands. And then once you lose the ball, Celtic have just got, like, they're so quick. And it was a great um, touch from Rogic. Didn't he dilly-dally about? 
got into the, the feet of the striker and he scores in his debut, but a very easy goal from him, a lot of space. Question to you, Gav uh, Campbell, young lad. You know, we'll, we'll rate him, he's a good player, um, but he, he never had the best tonight. And he gets the ball, Hanlon plays to Doig, Doig plays to him, and instead of playing inside to whoever was there, I, I, you know, I can't remember now, but he tries to play that ball back to Doig. Now, Maloney did say there'll be mistakes made. Mm -hmm. That that was two, you know, three three minutes, three and a half minutes into the game. So he made the mistake, and it cost us a goal. And really, to be honest, at Parkhead, if you lose a goal as early as that, you've got to get the next one. If you don't, the game's over. It's the sort of thing at, at Parkhead, like Nisbet has to take that chance, and then you can't give away the ball that cheaply. Like. <laughs> I know there was a long way to go, but really we were, you know, making a, a, a we we're starting to dig our grave that early in the ah. game, just missing that chance and then get handing them that one on, on a platter and, and in so many ways, like we say, the, um, playing into their hands in terms of uh, the pressure, but giving them that much space as well. Well, I did say, I th you know, once once uh, the pressure was hitting us like that, I just thought it was going to be five or six. I really yeah. did because we were way 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 off the game and. Uh, yeah, well, we're trying to we're trying to play football, and as you know, Maloney's not had the team for long, and I just keep on saying, you know, he he did turn around and says that we're going to make mistakes, and any good manager that comes in and starts to try and play football turns around and says that we will make mistakes until it comes good. Yeah, and I've still, you know, don't get me wrong, I've still got. Um, I, I'm I'm thinking that Hebs the we will come good once we get into the the way that he wants us to play, and as you said earlier, it's probably uh, better getting beat from Celtic rather than a St Johnston or a Motherwell or teams that we should we should try and beat. Mm. Whereas Celtic, they're they're very difficult on their own patch. Yeah. Um, next note I had here was about you know us on the edge of the box and it was like a restart from um, Joe Newell playing it back and it ended up back with the goalkeeper but you, like so you've already touched on that but yeah just there was a lot of that in the game where we had opportunities to maybe try and find some space in behind and instead we were trying to keep possession and go back and like I say I mean Hibbs done well off the back of that in terms of I think you said about afterwards that like 20 passes or something but we're not doing anything with it and I know you've got to be patient at Barkhead but that kind of became the norm. Uh, although in saying that up until like 20 25 minutes Celtic were were pressing a lot um you know they were forcing us into our own half and um, forcing us into mistakes getting a lot of crosses into the box especially that first half I'd love to see the stats in terms of like I say recording us straight after I'd love to see the stats for how many crosses they got into the box in that first half thankfully well, they never sort of came well, to much well the stats you were you were talking about stats here and accurate passes and one of the boys puts on uh, the our Hibs talk chat um, accurate passes now Celtic <coughs> had 428 we had 501 um, in, the, in our own half wait for this 199 Celtic and we had 367 passes in our own half it just shows yeah. that it's it's near enough double um, so we were going nowhere I remember myself and Dave t talking on the last podcast we done about the Dundee United game about the difference in terms of passes and how we had so many passes in the opposition half and obviously it's a lot easier to do that at Dundee United than it is um, Parkhead but um, yeah that's that's a, a bit of a, a frustrating one that one. Um, see the see the passes, Gav. They're they're saying that uh, Celtic had five hundred and five total passes and we had five hundred eighty nine. Mm. You know it, it shows that. The, the past success... And 408 of them were rocky to Hanlon. Yeah. Well, <laughs> what did I say to you? Every time. Now, the guy was okay. He, mm. he, he's not played a lot of games for a long time. Um, but every time he got the ball, it was he was told to give it to Hanlon because he must be way off the mark and he can't be... As I just showed that on Sky Sport. That really, mess, I didn't that miss. That miss, miss, yeah. miss, miss. Um, um, But, you know, uh, it, the passes, yes, we're, comfortab we're getting comfortable on the ball because how many times with Jack Ross we were pinging it? Aye, you know, I had them with a hoof, a hopeless yeah, diagonal. Aye, yeah. and it would go right out, right out 
you know, and it would be a throw into the opposite team. So yes, we're 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 getting there, and are we asking for too much mm. too soon? I mean, to be fair, to be fair to Hibbs as well. Um, something I meant to put in the team selection was, you know, uh, we said about Rocky starting um, in defence. I think it's fair to say if everybody was fit and everyone was not suspended, Rocky wouldn't have started that game. You know, it, it potentially would have been McGinn, Porteous, Hanlon, a bit sort of more known, or potentially Clark if he's if he's if he was ready to go. Obviously, he's picked up an injury. Um, Porteous is suspended. McGinn suspended. It, 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 it has kind of left us, uh, and, and I, I, I love Big Darren McGregor, but the pace, uh, the, the pace of their um, attack, and obviously we were, we were aye, and and obviously we didn't know whether Kyogre would have been playing as well and stuff. Like I would have been really worried about yeah. going uh, McGregor and that. But well, anyway, I, I think if Clark hadn't got injured, mm. he would have been playing there instead of. Rocky. Yes, I'd agree. Yeah, uh, and he knows the Scottish game and he knows the Scottish players mm. or the Scottish teams. Um, so I think um, he would have been in there. And he was match fit, whereas Rocky was, you know, the guys. But sort of. I, I mean, in, in terms of Rocky, though, I mean, like you say, um, the positioning for the first goal wasn't great, and yes, he maybe played it a bit safe in terms of passing to Hanlon um, a lot. But apart from that, I thought he he done all right. Like, yeah, he, wasn't he at fault for the second goal? Um, he he, you know, didn't he really put much of a foot wrong? Safe performance, but you know, decent performance, especially at Parkhead, and yeah, no, and, and probably totally played his, his part and and keeping Celtic quiet the second half. Yeah, totally agree. Totally yeah. agree. Um, like I say, uh, in terms of the, the rest of the, stuff, the first half, uh, Celtic did uh, go 2 0 up. McGregor in so much space. Like mm. the fact that he had that much area around him, just in front of him and behind him. Um, and he's got other team in the world, brilliant pass from him. Um, picks out uh, Abada, who kind of flicks it up. It hits Doig's uh, arm. I thought it was a penalty. Did you think it was a. By the current rules of the game, would you say it's a penalty, whether it's a harsh or not? What was your thoughts? Is that a penalty? A, a bit. A bit harsh, um, but the you know what? I don't really know, Gav, because the rules are getting changed every bloody aye, day. Every summer they're changing, I, and you know, aye. and and that's the that's the thing. I don't I don't really know if it's ball played man or the. Uh, oh, I honestly I've not got a clue to be honest because, um, you know, you hear them on Sky, you know, Graham Sunnis and Jamie Redknapp and all these guys, and and they, they I think there was one at the weekend, and they were saying that as well. They were like. What is the rule? The struggle to keep up. You know, right, should they not just say, should they not just say it's a penalty if it hits your hand? End off. And and first of all, I thought um, I'm not sure who it was that was run through um, Celtic player. I thought he brought it down with his hand. A, a badder, yeah. A badder. I th- I thought he sort of you know how you you a player brings the, the their both arms in to try and control it on their chest, and I thought that he sort of had half an arm to it so but we never got to it it's a penalty if it hits your hand and you know that's you know but and then it scored right <laughs> yeah number 88 scored for the penalty spot i can't pronounce his name I'm just going for number 88 uh, <laughs> good performance of him overall to be fair from a certain point of view but we're not here to talk about that uh 30th minute there was a um, hips had a throw in about three quarters of the way through their own half you know opportunity to get the ball forward uh, it goes back to the keeper, pressure from the Celtic um, attack, and they almost have a chance off the back of it. Just too simple. So I always, you know, if you're going to play backwards, it's kind of playing into their hands at times. Uh, Nisbet was fouled by Starfield. I thought it was an absolute, like, nailed on yellow card. Had to uh, be. I hit the Celtic TV, said it was a 50 50 challenge, <laughs> <laughs> and another one said, oh, he, he just got the man. Yeah, it was an absolute stonewall um, booking. Um, Cadden, uh, again looking dangerous down the right hand side, got a, in a bit of space and um, picked out Nisbet and I didn't even get the shot on target. Um, I mean, three attempts from Nisbet in the first half, um, all in the box and, you know, one he hits the post when he should have scored, the other one doesn't he, it, hang, it goes off the defender and, and the other one like hang over the bar, I can't remember the last one. But yeah, like, he's just not, he's really struggling at the moment, Nisbet, isn't he? Yeah, I, I think um, I think Nisbet needs a rest. I know he's been he's not done anything for ten days or whatever that you know three couple, weeks, couple, three and a half weeks, three, <laughs> week, three, or three weeks. Nah, uh, he's not done anything for months. Yeah. To be honest, and um, I don't know what it is, um, but he is totally out of it. He he needs to get put on the bench and bring in uh, hopefully Muller, which I'm really surprised tonight. Uh, he never got on but 
I don't know why, um, but you, we need someone up top that's, you know, even Dodge. Give, give Dodge a, a go because we need someone who's going to actually sort of have a go. Nisbet does a lot of work off the ball, we know that, but how many times, you know, yeah. he miss, just actually misses, you know, he kicked, he kicked here at that one that it came over. You know, he got crossed over and he he, he just missed it. He, yeah. he's, he, he seems to be a yard to two yards off the off the pace. Mm. And I, I don't know how you how you sort it, you know. Uh, I, I mean, I think it's maybe getting to the point where, I mean, uh, hopefully Melkerson's work permit um, can come through. I know he can play there. We've got Dodge. Um, James Scott looked all right at points when he came on in the second half. Maybe a bit more options there to kind of rest in his bit. Maybe bring him off the bench for 20 minutes for the next like three or four games and, and try and, you know, put him at the team so he goes, he, he maybe gives him a kick up the arse to maybe go, oh, I need to work to get back. But uh, at the moment, I don't know. Um, I know Nis- uh, Maloney spoke in the past about he's the perfect time, type of forward for what he wants to play. So maybe Maloney will stick with him. And I hope that pays off if he does. Yeah, um, I, but I, I just, I, I, I've not seen any evidence of that going to be paying off for Maloney anytime soon. I hope so, Gav. I really do, because um, I, like every other Hib supporter, we, we love Nisbet. Really do, and you know, if he does listen, <laughs> I'm not saying he listens to the Hibs talk, but if he does, you know, we want him to do well. You know, we're not we're not hanging him out to dry. We're we're wanting him to start going on a goal feast again. You know, and that's that's something that he's got to sort out himself. Mm. It it must it. It, you just don't lose goals, but it must be up in his brain that he's, he's either trying too hard or what, I don't know. But we want him back. We want him to start scoring the goals that we had of Nisbet when, you know, Birmingham and other clubs were looking at him and he was getting called up to Scotland. There's a player there. Definitely a, play, a player there. So we need him back. So if it takes... Nisbet to be on the bench for, as you say, for maybe two, three, four games and come on and prove his worth, so be it. Yeah. Well, um, I'm interested to see it follow that one over the next few weeks. Um, I'd, I'd like to say maybe a few goals against Cove Rangers will help, but at the same time, you know, he scored pretty much a hat trick against St. Johnson. I thought that was going to kick him on. I said that on the pod at the time. Um, I know it two got disallowed, but I felt that was him, you know, finding that goal scoring touch and but nah, it's, it's still not really came about. Uh, in the second half, um, Celtic have three chances in about three minutes. Uh, Hitati with the the best of the three probably should have made it three nil. Um, in terms of Hibs, the subs we brought Jamie Murphy on, we brought Louis on, we brought um, James Scott on as I mentioned earlier. Scott Allen um, and Stephen Bradley. Um, like I say, Maloney spoke in the past about giving youngsters opportunities. I, I don't get me wrong, I'm excited to hear that. I know me and Dave spoke about that in the previous pod, but um, at the same time, uh, Stephen was on that pod as well, sorry, apologies, Stephen. <laughs> we all spoke about, you know, youngsters getting minutes, hopefully meant like Josh O'Connor and stuff getting minutes, but at the same time, Hecky said that and didn't he do it. Jack Ross said it and done it with Doig and that's about it. So, I mean, I know it's early days, but uh, Stephen Bradley recalled, maybe didn't have the best game, but I mean, obviously Parkhead's not, and we're 2-0 down, it's not exactly the best time to showcase yourself, but... It's good to see Maloney, you know, especially with this five root subs thing coming in and and giving uh, some youngsters some opportunities. Well, it's it's actually funny that he gets a game and Muller doesn't, mm. you know, because we were busy thinking, oh, Muller's coming on next, but <laughs> you know, he he doesn't he doesn't come on and and you put the young boy on, which is fantastic for bringing in young, you know, the young players through, but. Was Muller injured, or is he not ready for this league? There's something not right because he's on a, a good wage. Mm. He's all the way. He's been here for a good few months now. Um, he's got his work permit. He's fit, and he's got pace. I've watched him. I don't know. Did you watch him in in America? I didn't watch him as much as you did. I know you I, watched a few Orlando games. Yeah. I watched one or two, but I know you watched a few I, more than me. I watched them a few. And and that that lad gave you know I I always say that you can't get more than a hundred percent but mm. um, he you know as for these Americans it gives a hundred fifty percent this lad 
he tracks back, he goes up and down the park, he swaps here, there, and, and you know, he gives 100%. I mean, like, my, my cynical um, brain sort of maybe thinks, oh, what if, you know, we're from a marketing point of view, if you kind of hype up um, Thursday as his debut, you know, he's going to play then, then, you know, you can maybe get a few more ticket sales out of it. But at the same time, Sean Maloney doesn't care about ticket sales. He's wanting to get a result at Parkhead. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe maybe he's, I, I know he's been here a month. I don't know what terms of his fitness and stuff. Maybe Maloney just felt it wasn't really the, the in terms of tactics and stuff. Um, he's still no maybe close, must, but must, I don't know. Well, well, hopefully we, we like we see him because he's. I think you know we're we're excited by Melkerson. Um, obviously a really sort of young, exciting player, but I think Muller's the one we're kind of really interested to see. It, it was it was actually really weird that, that he brings on the young boy, which you know he never never done anything wrong, but he never done anything right. I've mm. um, never had much time. However. You've got a guy who's came from America and he's seemingly on a good wage. Why did he not come on? And that's I'd like to know. I'd like actually if if we could if if we actually could get a a, a question to Maloney, I'd like to know that answer mm. because you know you know we <coughs> Liam who's on the the Hibstock Extra, you know he 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 loves him. He he's he just you know he's mad on him. And he went. He was at Parkhead tonight, and I think he he thought he was going to see him. Ah, he's sending photos of him warming up. Like, <laughs> Here we go. He's coming on. Oh. He's coming on. He's coming. On. Never nah. appeared. <laughs> so it was it was a weird one, and I would like to know if Maloney has he got a wee niggle or whatever. Why did he not get on? Yeah, hopefully he plays Thursday. Let's see. We'll get to in a, in a bit more in a sec. But um, in terms of the second half, I mean, like I've not really got much more notes. We kept Celtic a bit quieter. Um, obviously they didn't really need to press for a second they've got a lot of games coming up but at the same time you know keeping Celtic quieter compared to what they were in the first half when you know uh, John Hartson's got them scoring four and uh, oh, John Collins don't. Them, <laughs> wanting them to score five or six which was a strange one um, but do you look at it positively in terms of that or do you look at it negative in terms of we're 2-0 down and we didn't really show enough evidence of trying to get back in the game to be honest Gav the game is finished at half time for me games are never over no 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 but Football's you know, like you can always like you know i've seen like i've watched enough man united to, to know that you can play badly and get results yeah so th there was not i don't see any reason why we shouldn't have tried to get a, i mean i know you leave yourself open if you try and like that's what celtic want and they want you to come attacking at them and but i mean what's the point you're turning down you might as well go no, for it no 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 is, is goal difference really going to be that important at the end of the season no but you didn't i know what's what a a manager will say at half time Try what, and take the two 0 and get out. That's no, boring. no, 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 no. Jack Ross is back. No, no. <laughs> Try and not lose the second half to two or three a game. You don't want to come back from Parkhead with a get a hump in, right? And keep it tight. The first, you know, if we if we sc scrape a goal, yeah, then the game's on. But you seen it? What did you say? Early, you know, I said about ten minutes ago. The first couple of minutes, two, three minutes, they had three chances. Mm. You know, the, the guy at the back post, he was never offside, but <laughs> he, 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 she should have scored. That was a, that would have been a goal. But I'm saying we had, we could have came away there five or six, right? I think Billy said it in the chat. I think that you go there and you try and keep the goals down because I said, we were way off it. And even the second half over the way off it. Mm. And I think I think um, coming away there, 2-0, you, you know, you'll look at that at the end of the season and you'll go, oh, that was the time that we got, you know, if it was a five or six, oh, that would be a hammering. 2-0, you'll, you'll, you'll just actually squint past it. Um, I just think that he, he'll work on it, Maloney. Yeah. I really do. I think he'll just work on it and that that's it. We got beat two 0 We got played off the park. To be honest, we have. We got played off the park. In terms of trying to do something in the second half, one player that did impress me, something I've been critical in the past, was Jamie Murphy. I thought he, you know, had a good ball uh, in the box. It should have been attacked. Um, when he picked up the ball, he was looking forward, which more players should have been doing. Um, you know, I, I think there's a few players like say him, James Scott, that were looking to give second chances under a new manager. Um, and you know, hopefully they can like say st stay fit. Because like, they both had fitness issues, issues for separate reasons. But I mean, you know, I thought Jamie Murphy was was a more sort of positive um, from the second half and looked looked quite encouraging. Yeah, well, it was a difference because he um, Campbell wasn't uh, was it Campbell? 
Did he come on for Campbell? Did he? Can't remember who he came on for. But he played. He played in the the right. Uh, the Jay Wright being behind the strikers. He played there. Ah, and Jay Wright went yeah. to the left wing yeah. back. Um, anyway, the, I think they changed the changed the formation and uh, Campbell wasn't doing much. You know, he was away in the left. That's not his game. Um, but when he came on, I think when Murphy came on, yeah, we did a wee bit. I, I still think the game, the game was away. You know, from from doing anything unless we scored we scored an early goal in the second half. It was it, it was a pass, 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 and sideways and backwards, and and we never did Joe Hart. Have to have a shower after the game? I don't think so. Did he have to get the vosey out? I don't think Pulling so. Up. No, or the head and shoulder was that? Is that what he did? Aye, he did that. Aye, head and shoulder. Yeah, yeah. Aye, I, I, I don't think he he wasn't even dirty because we. I don't even think he had a save to make. Yeah. Um. The only thing that was a problem for him was that one at uh, Nisbet should have scored, and yeah. it could have been a different game. I don't know, but you know, I, I think uh, Hibs tonight were way off the mark, and we just got to move on to Cove Rangers yeah in terms of talking points like say I had uh, Newell which we've discussed Rocky's debut which we've discussed New, uh, Nisbet's form which again we've discussed um, No Muller which you, you brought up um, Jamie Murphy looking quite promising uh, and Ka- Cadden uh, I, like I say I know we, we talked about his, his crosses he put on a plate twi- twice for Nisbet um, a real attacking outlet found himself in space I thought you know I mean, I know, like I say, I've, I've seen some stuff on some of the Facebook groups and stuff, some people saying uh, Rocky, but for me, Cadden was, was our best player by, by quite a bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. There was no one, Boyle never done a thing because um, he never got the ball and no, no one was helping him Lack out. Lack of service for him. And yeah, like of course. D- d- done a lot in that, that, that first chance, but yeah, overall, yeah. Yeah, so Cadden, yeah, probably the, the best man on the park. You can look at Macy, he was, oh, he was a bit slow, he's the ball at his feet. However, he had about... Maybe about three or four saves that yeah. they're going in the back of the net. So, you know, you could look at Macy or Cadden. Yeah, aye. M- Macy as well. It's a f- good point, uh, Duncan. Well. But, I mean, I think that's, a, that's um, you know, three games now under Maloney and Cadden's impressing all of them. Um, one who I was kind of a bit critical of his final ball and stuff. But, you know, that's, that's three games under uh, Maloney where he's been, I thought he was brilliant against Dundee United, really yeah. brilliant against Aberdeen, and then our best player tonight. So, you know, he's he's finding a bit of form. He's got a new lease of life. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So, so fingers crossed for that he's a big player for us going into the rest of the season. Um, so, like I say, like you mentioned earlier, Stuart, the, the, the next game is Cove Rangers. Um, Scottish Cup game only like, three days away, Thursday night. Um, I mean, like I, said, I was going to bring this up later, but I will start right now. I mean, I think it's good to see that Hibs are, you know, um, bringing the prices down. It is on BBC, but for season ticket holders, £10 for adults, £5 for kids. If you're not a season ticket holder, I guess it's an incentive to get a season ticket. Um, £15 and £10. But we've been saying this for ages, you know, get the prices down, especially games like this. Get people in the stadium. I hope it works. Well, if they didn't bring the prices down and they were the normal... Because they, they, they have been in the past. We played, you know, uh, like I can't Elgo and whatever it was, or I can't remember who we played a few yeah. years ago, and it was like 23 quid. Well, you've got to remember, um, it's got to be the away team that actually greeted us. Because this goes back to the SFA years and years ago. I remember um, <laughs> I remember when Stenhouse Muir played Whitehill Welfare away back in the early 90s, possibly. Kenny Muller was with Stenhouse Muir, right, when he was a young boy. And it was £8 to get in then. £8, and, and you I don't know when that was. It was probably in, God, 92, 93, 94, whenever it was. So they get told how much they have to charge. So because the SFA, the SFA tell the home team. And if they want to reduce it because they're missing out, you know, Cove Rangers are coming down here to play against Tibbs, Hibs might say, listen, it's on the TV. So instead of 10,000 being here, we maybe only get four. So you're going to lose out anyway. Mm. So there, uh, But if we put it to £10, because we get, you get half, what's going to happen is we'll maybe get 10, 12,000. I, I don't think we'll get any more because it's on the TV. So that is the, the reason behind it. SFA call the shots with the prices. But they've got to agree the home and away. Now, that was years ago. I'm not saying it's it's still the same, but I would imagine it will be. Um, that's why a Cove Rangers, if they get Celtic or Rangers, they're happy because they're making a lot of money. Mm. But they've got to realise that 
you know, especially if it's a Hibs, we, you know, we're not going to start, you know, go, the, who, how many people are wanting to go to that game uh, when they've got to pay for it, even if you're a season ticket book holder, mm. you know, you, you turn up for games, you've got to pay for it this time, and it's on the TV, BBC, it's on Terrestrial, you know. Yeah, it's, it's a tough sell from Hibs' point of view, I mean, like, I, I spoke about the, the, the my um, views on ticket and pricing, uh, we had a chat with Colin Leslie talking about his book, the, yeah. um, the his eighties books, uh, best bestie to be- beastie to Belgium. Um, so like I say, that 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 podcast is up just now. Uh, we recorded that's we recorded uploaded that on Sunday morning. Sunday, um, so yeah, so, yeah, it's up on YouTube. The video's up on YouTube, but it's also up as a podcast. So make sure you check that out. But yeah, I made my points about that. But I have kids free, I have everything like that. So yeah, um, but yeah, that's a great, that was a great chat with Colin on while we're on the topic. That was it was you, me, and, and Colin had a great chat yeah, about the eighties. So yeah, make sure you you check that out. If Good mate, already. Mate. Aye. Um, great book as well. Um, so yeah, like I say, really fun chat. And um, like I say, I wasn't alive in the eighties, so it's great to hear some of those stories. And I'm looking forward to getting fully into the book. And I was, <laughs> the old bastard. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back to Cove Rangers. Um, like I say, was, we mentioned earlier, three days time the game. Many changes for you. You know what? I didn't realise that um, we were we were actually playing them so early. You know, Thursday. Um, I thought it was at the weekend. So uh, there is probably a reasoning behind Maloney um, with his team tonight. And I'll think that Muller will start. Nisbet will be in the bench. Um, and there'll be a couple of young guys in there. I think, I really do. I think there will be. And there'll be enough on the bench if we're toiling, just in case, that they can come on and do their bit. But I think Muller will, I think Muller will start. And um, and other young players will come in. I have to say, I was thinking about it before we started recording. I was thinking about you know, I'd like to see maybe Muller Nisbet and um, no, sorry, Muller Murphy and Dodge plays a front three, or maybe even James Scott plays a front three, um, and sort of see a bit of rotation. But at the same time, <laughs> part and back of my brain's going, is this maybe the last chance we we'll get to see Martin Boyle? Like I, I know the transfer window is only what fourteen days away. So I, I I don't know I I part of me wants to say Boyle play because it might be the last chance we get to see him. So I I don't know I don't know what I have no inside information what's happening with that. But I I really I want to see Boyle here for the rest of the season at very very least. Um, but Thursday could be our last chance to see him. We'll find out, Gav, because well I'll, I'm going to the game. Um, definitely I'm I want to go. Um, I want to see how they play against the team that it's like their f- cup final for them, right? And uh, I want to see Maloney how he he you know if he goes for the jugular, um, like you should do when you're in a, a Scottish Cup tie against the minnow. Um, and if we're playing uh, Boyle, or if he comes on, and if he gives us a wee you know a wee clap before the end of the the game, or sorry at the end of the game, I think we know that he'll be away. And I think. Most Hibs players, are, uh, Hibs fans, sorry, are of the the same opinion. We we're uh, w- we've seen Boyle for many a year. He signed on extra years to give Hibs money back, and this is a time that we'll we'll score off him. And I I think the guy should you know if he gets a good payday. Um, wherever he's going, good luck and go and get the money, mate. Um, yeah. he's he's done us proud, uh, and and it's I don't want Gav honestly, mate. I didn't want him to go, and the Hibs fans don't, but he's not going to Celtic or Rangers, and if it, if well, he, you never know, there's still well, quite yeah, time for yeah, well, the bids. Yeah, well, I know, I know, I know. But if he did go to Celtic or Rangers, you know, like most their players d- do or did. In the past, it's shit. Yeah. You know, how many how many times have we seen and I just mentioned one there, Kenny Miller. You know, that that lad Play for them both. Aye, I know. <laughs> Numerous but, times. Aye. And and <laughs> Kenny Miller was you know, I seen him playing again. I couldn't believe that he was up at you know, playing for Stennis Muir uh, when he was uh, I think it was Stennis Muir anyway, against um Whitehill Welfare and the guy scored two or three goals in that game and, and we got him back and because he was on loan. You know, we're, we're, we've seen the boils at the peak to go now. Yeah. I mean, I said that's the disappointing thing about being a Hibs fan. Like, you never, like, top players will never be at their peak at Hibs. 
Um, you know, we'll, we'll have good players like Hanlon and Stevenson who will spend their career at Hibs. But in terms of the top players, when they reach their peak, they're not really at Hibs anymore. John McGinn, no. um, you know, so, Martin Boyle, another one. So, I mean, I think there's a, a good chance he goes before the window. I hope he stays till the, at the very least end of the season. I'd love it if he stayed forever, but I, I think that's been unrealistic to kind of see that. Um, in terms of Cove Rangers, I mean, you know, we probably shouldn't take them too lightly. Good season from them. They are uh, top of the League One, um, eight points clear. Uh, a whole uh, 24 points clear of Falkirk who are not doing that good at all what's a what's shame on Falkirk oh, great. Um, <laughs> but yeah Cove Rangers you know um, what's the goal uh, difference Gav they are plus 25 Jesus so uh, quite a bit they're definitely headed for the championship you know a lot of money in them um, a good side Pro- I think we should probably be looking at them as a championship side already rather than a league one side coming to Easter Road so Maybe not the easiest game, but one, especially with, with um, the talent we have at our disposal, we should be winning. The thing is, they can score goals, uh, and the, there's always a, a Scottish Cup. Listen, you see what's happened down in England, in the English FA. Mm. You know, <laughs> you know they, there's been a lot of things that's been going on down there, and, and teams get knocked out. So, but, you know, we've got to keep our guard up. Um, they can score goals, so we just got to watch. Um, and, you know, We've just mentioned there, is he going to make changes? And if he does, they've got to be the right changes. So we don't, you know, we don't have to bring on subs at half time because we're 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 losing or whatever. So yeah, it's a hard one. It's a hard one. But just they're a good side. Yeah, um, maybe an interesting one. Like I say, hope, I, I like I said, I'll come back to the ticket prices. I genuinely hope it's a good attendance, kind of justifying the the low ticket prices. It's, it's a hard one because, like I say, it's on BBC. Like I say, not just on. Sky or Premier Sports, it's on terrestrial TV. It's kind of, um, it's like, no exactly um, warm weather outside. You know, so you know, Gav, no temptation just to watch it on. I hope, I hope the Hibs fans come out. Mm. I hope the Hib- Hibs fans come out. And if and if they've not been, you know, if they're not season ticket holders and they've not been a game yet under Maloney, you know, if you're listening, come out because I tell you what, <laughs> what I seen at Easter Road when against Aberdeen it was absolutely fantastic different game tonight I know you're playing a better pos- opposition however Aberdeen were a good side and tell you what you have Cam Dune for the man I was watching the game with during those 90 minutes <laughs> I'm chilled out man I'm chilled out I'm chilled out I told you that's what happens about half an hour an hour, an hour after I, I, I start to see down. the big picture yeah I, I, and, and, and as I say I, I, I just think that um, you know get your butt along to Easter Road on Thursday Ten pound, five other kids. If you've not got any kids, you can't bring them along. <laughs> <laughs> so as a as a tenor, and just get along, get a couple of babies before it, and watch the game. You'll yeah. enjoy it. And and I still think that it's exciting times at Easter Road. And I just wish that people come out again and get excited because the excitement was away, and I think it's back again. Yeah, all right. It's a, a couple of encouraging performances and hopefully another one. Uh, what's your score prediction for the game? Four <sighs> one. Wow. Okay, I'll go two 0 I'll just sort of you know solid couple of goals, clean sheet in the next round. Co Rangers I think are a decent team. Um, so yeah, I'll take two 0 I think they'll round. score. Do you? I think, yeah, I think they'll score because mm. um, if you've just told me about the goal difference, twenty five. So they must have scored probably about sixty. I can check it back. I'd be asked. Yeah, no, no, it doesn't matter this time of night. No, I probably scored probably about sixty odd goals. Nice. Um, so yeah, they know where the back end is. So give them a goal mm. and we'll take four. Um, so uh, like so we'll finish up with talking very briefly about the transfer window. Um, Hibsock extra time. Craig and Liam. I uh, were joined by Joe and they talked about all our new signings um they had a the they had a what was it? reindeer hot dog that's right yeah uh, the yeah. norwegian expert coming on talking about what we can expect from melkerson um uh, liam has insight to kind of uh, the henderson family so kind of spoke to uh, uh one of henderson's brothers and asked him about what to expect from jamie, him. I think jamie, yeah. jamie yeah um so like i say that we, we, there was that, that's a great episode so you know in terms of what to expect for the new signings um get an in-depth Check check, uh, check it from them if you haven't done so already. Um, but briefly, what was your, what's your kind of reaction to the the signings we've made? Are you pleased with the business we've done? Yeah, and I don't think there's going to be much more. Um, probably out more than anything. It's I don't think we're going to get any more coming in. Uh, but I think there'll probably be um, maybe about three, possibly four out before the end of the month. Mm. Um, it was actually quite. Um, weird seeing Scott Allen getting time tonight because there's been you know talk about Dundee 
um, St Mirren now. So was in terms of the players in though, is there one like see, I know we spoke about Muller, but like he was kind of already what done. Is there one out of the four new signings that you're excited by the most? Um, let me think now. So we've got Melkerson, who's uh, signed. Yeah, yeah, it's him. Yeah, it's the young boy because he's he's got an attitude. Um, he he says he's going to score goals, and I love that. Um, ah, yeah, I think I think it's Melkerson. I've watched Muller. I've never seen Melkerson, you know, apart from his, you know, your three minutes YouTube, YouTube video yeah, highlight, yeah, which, you know, know, which I could have probably put that together. And me we got excited when we seen Slavka's right. highlight reel. Let's not get carried away. I know. You and me scored goals in three minutes, and we could have got a game for Ibs, ah. um, playing five sides. But <laughs> no, I think uh, Melkerson. Um, My video highlight would be re- reel would be very short. I think I've scored about three goals in the past four years in five to side football. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think Melkerson. He's got that attitude, um, so I'm looking forward to him. Muller, because I've seen him play, you know, a lot of games mm. um, in America. Um, I'm just disappointed I never seen him tonight, but I forgot that it was so close to the game on Thursday that I think he'll be. Pl- he's probably been told, listen, if we need you, we'll put you on tonight. And maybe Maloney's went, listen, I'm going to be giving you 90 minutes on Thursday. Hence, I'm mm. not going to put you on here in case you, you know, coming on. You know, it's always, a, it's Gav. If if you're getting put on me ten fifteen minutes ago and it's freezing cold tonight, you maybe pull a hammy. You maybe. know what I mean? You know, so you know if you're no warm, I'm not saying he's well, no. If Jamie warm, Murphy can survive that, then surely Muller can. Well, I, I know, I, I, I know, I know. <laughs> Mister Injury himself. I know, I know, but I'm, I'm just sort of looking at different, you know, attitudes of. It's a strange one why Muller didn't. Yeah, play, yeah. Why Maloney's probably said, you know, I'm, I'm not playing. I'm, you're getting ninety minutes. Uh, on Thursday, that's Hopefully, your game. Yeah. yeah, and and uh, as I say, I never thought of that about Thursday because I didn't realise it was so close. So yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to Muller, and I'm looking forward to Melkerson. And I think maybe play if if they've got his uh, work permit, Melkerson could probably start as well. Yeah, because I think Nisbet's not going to be there on Thursday. Mm. I don't think he'll be starting. I think uh, Clark's a sensible one. I think he's an upgrade on McGinn um, in terms of that sort of right back who can play right centre back. I think, you know, Clark's probably uh, obviously disappointed about his injury. 68 weeks we're talking about with a hamstring, just, you know. Only um, hips, eh? Uh, Only hips. It's an absolute gutter. I'll be interested to see whether we look at a centre back off the back of that. Uh, some sort of short-term deal or something because that's an absolute gutter. But, I mean, McGinn back after a few um, game suspension. Question. Does he go back to... Arsenal, because he's no out idea. for six, eight weeks. Yeah, but just uh, mm. if anybody out there knows, I've heard. I mean, I, I mean, I think uh, you know, Hibs. Sh- I mean, I know Arsenal. Arsenal, uh, they're getting better with the injuries, but they've got a bad history of injuries. I'd hope that he sticks around in terms of settling in in Edinburgh and you know settling in with the squad, even if he's just doing rehabil- rehabilitation and stuff. Re- reason I'm thinking about that, and I, and I'm not. I, no, I'm saying it because Arsenal will have more high tech. Um, for injuries than what Hibs have got because they'll have these things that they go and sit in you know for half an hour and whatever and, and it what and the big like aqua tubs like Boca, Book of Boba Fett I'm realising I'm making that reference when you've not seen it but for those that have watched Boca, Boca, Book of Boba Fett they'll get that but yeah um, <laughs> you know, high tech stuff yeah they're going in they'll, they'll be sitting in there and, and it affects the you know it gets your um, limbs and everything all better so I, I'm just wondering does he go back down to Arsenal Don't even know. for a couple of weeks mm. and for them to to put him through that and, and try because it's in their interest as well mm. you know so you know do they do that I don't know so or does he just stay at Hibs I, I'm not clear but he's he, he was a miss I think he was a miss tonight as well because he what I've seen with Ross County the guy's an athlete yeah would have been a good, good, good one to have in there like I said I mean the, the goals came for the other side so um, that would have been a problem but in terms of yeah I think he would have been a real asset today and, and hopefully as towards the end of the season hopefully the injury is not too bad and he can get back sooner rather than later um, like I say Henderson's one I'm really excited by as well um, obviously I, I don't want the comparisons too much to his brother he's his own guy but like I say folk are going to make those comparisons I'm just waiting for like I can imagine when he goes to take a corner because he's apparently good at de- uh, set pieces <laughs> how many he how many people will you hear around you nudge their mates and go oh, oh, right, Henderson right. to deliver he's to deliver 
<laughs> you'll, you'll, it's great. <laughs> Big Green will no be on the end there. <laughs> honestly, I, I guarantee the first corner he goes to take, it'll be unbearable. Um, obviously, he missed out tonight. Uh, loan agreement, so couldn't he be involved? But like I said, I, ho- I hope he's one that we get to see on Thursday. Uh, he's one that I'm excited by as well. And like I said, Tate as well. You know, obviously, I mean, I think he's he's maybe one for m- more sort of long term. Um, but seen bits of him this season, hopefully, hopefully, and then involved. Although not in the squad today, which is strange. See, one, we've just we've just mentioned four players that will probably start. Yeah, uh, they've not been involved. So maybe that's a bit of a sort of let off for him today. Yeah. Um, you sort of talk, talking about earlier on, you know, players that could potentially go. You could see three or four. Scott Allen, you mentioned. Any other ones you think might go? Well, um, Halberg, he was on the bench tonight. He he was probably just there in case of. Linked um, to St. Johnston last week, but nothing seemed to have come to that. Like I said, they were talking yeah. about loan hips, maybe looking at something more permanent, but that was just yeah. a paper talk. I don't know if there's anything yeah. accurate in that. But um, Who else? Who, who, I've, I mentioned, I've, I've put a list down that I've, I've not got in front of me. Um, so Scott Allen, Halberg. I did think that Dodge might have been... You know, put out because he's never kicked a ball under Maloney yet. Mm. Or if he has, he's it's not been off the bench. Not, not, yeah. not been long. Not been long. But they've been told that he does. He's not going anywhere. Um, Which I'm mean, I'm really relieved about. Yeah. You know, I, I'm I obviously missed a lot of the season due to injury. But you've know, got to remember, you know, in a rubbish Hibs team, he scored what 18 goals in his first season. Mm. Um. So yeah, he's, he's so yeah. Another thing though, Gav, with Dodge, we played to his strengths. Mm. And Maloney's not going to play that. Maybe that not. Way. No. So does he fit in? That's the thing. Does he fit in? Well, he's saying a three-year deal, so he better. <laughs> uh, aye, aye. <laughs> I, I, to be honest, uh, you know th- what? Th- I just remembered now the other one of the other players which threw me tonight was uh, Newell because I th- I had him on the list to go, mm. and he went and started tonight. Now was that because of injury, um, suspension, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, or Henderson not being able to play? Is he just playing tonight, just for on and you know on the transfer window, you know, put him on the telly? But I don't think he's. I don't think he fits in. I mean, like I say, I, I, I think um, I maybe I'm being too kind on him, but you know, I think you know part of his performance today was because of the instructions from from the coaching staff and like I say, playing it back and playing it safe, keep possession. Um, but I, I, I have to say, I, I really like John Rule. I think he's. Uh, He's really, you know, he had a really bad start. He really turned it around. I hope that, you know, I, I know I was speaking to him ahead of the cup final and, and you know, pointing out the fact that he's really close to 100 performances, uh, 100 appearances for Hibs. Um, I hope he hits that and, he, you know, he, he, he does play a big part of the team. I do worry about him and Jake Doll. He's playing a two, a bit mm. too safe at times. But even today, I think Jake Doll is what, like, he was very much, you know, a Barry back pass, Barry side his packs. But today, he was getting the ball forward a lot more. See, um, so that's see, that's inc- and, and and especially Dundee United. Um, see, so do you, do you think that uh, Jake Doll Hayes played in a different role tonight because Newell was playing? It was everyone coming through Newell. Mm. Whereas when Newell wasn't playing when he was injured, Jake Doll Hayes, everyone was coming through him, and he was playing a big part in midfield tonight Jake Doyle Hayes was sitting sort of behind him and you know playing in front of the def- whatever defence we were playing you know three or four now I I, I, I thought Jake Doyle Hayes really done not a lot tonight mm. um, I, I thought he I thought he'd done he was a tidy eight times a couple of a couple um, of wee passes things out to, to Cadden which worked quite, quite well and there's a couple of times where he was attempting balls in behind so. but that's not his game he mm. he's he's like a, what would you say a sort of a, he gets the ball and, and runs forward like a Roy Keane you know sort of gets through if he can get by a couple of men he'll get you know find the space them. and then yeah. pace it, pass it to other yeah. people yeah. and I think that it was played different tonight because of uh, Henderson no, I still think it'll be Henderson and uh, Jake Daniel Hayes will be in, in the middle mm. of there I mean it's, it's, I have no idea where Henderson's going to play it's an interesting one because he can play in the middle he can play as part of a front three um, he can play out wide so I, I have no idea where he kind of fits into this Hibs team um, so that that's one I'm, I'm intrigued by as well um, the, the final thing like see when we, we talked about Boyle um, we've talked about whether he should go whether he will go if he does go do you see us dipping our toes into the transfer market to get a replacement for him nah I don't think so I don't think we, I don't think we can afford to um, we get that money I, I think that these players that we brought in 
are costing a lot of money. So you think Muller, Melkerson, and Nisbet would be the front three if Buller, if Boyle goes? Uh, I think I think uh, I think the money that we've re- received or we, we would receive from Boyle, I'll fund these players over. Nah, we've got, we've got Ron Gordon now. We're we're big time. We're big time. We can afford the big wages. Well, Ron, <laughs> if you're listening, Ron. Come on to Hibs Talk, <laughs> and we would love a wee chat with you and find out what you can do, mate, or what you're going to do. Mm. So if you're listening, Ron, come on to Hibs Talk. Aye. I mean, it's, I have to say, it's an interesting one. I think, um, I think we would go out and sign somebody else if Boyle did go. Um, I think if we we're, were able to get that money in, and you know, like I said, a couple of boys talking in the, in the, in the group chat mentioning like, names like Jordan Jones, I don't think that's the answer. But I, I think we would bring in another winger um, who could sort of play as, as, a, as a striker as well. Ideally, somebody with a bit of pace to kind of um, Luka- maybe, maybe, Lukaku. <laughs> he's not happy at Chelsea, so no, no. Uh, maybe maybe somebody a bit younger, like say, obviously Boyle's now is prime at what twenty eight. Maybe somebody 23, 24 that could develop mm-hmm. into that player. What's that boy St. Mirren that they were talking about? The guys were chatting about uh, McGrath. Is, McGrath is uh, he a winger? Uh, no, he's more of a central attacking midfielder. Um, yeah, yeah, we've so, got plenty of them. Aye, uh, he's a. Uh, I think he's going down south because Aberdeen have kind of pulled out because he's been dilly dallying. I think he's going yeah. to. Blackburn more, and more Middlesbrough, money. I think, interested. So. The thing is, you know, Maloney might, uh, he might pull one out of the hat. Yeah. You know, he, he, you know, he, he knows plenty. You know, Belgian under-21s or 19s or mm. um, English players. So, you know, it, Maloney might just pull one out of the hat that we do not know of and we can afford. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so like I say, if you want to hear more transfer chat, the check out Hibs Talk Extra Time in the episode five, uh, where they talked about all the new signings in depth and uh, what we still needed. Uh, like I say, check out our chat, mine and Papa Sue's chat with um, Colin Leslie talking about his new book, talking about Hibs in the eighties. Um, if you're watching Hibs in the eighties, um, it's a great listen. If you weren't, it's a great listen to hear some of the stories. Like from my point of view, um, it, it was really enjoyable. So check that one out as well. Also up to the YouTube video. We'll be back next week uh, to look back at the Cove Rangers game and preview Motherwell, which I believe is on Wednesday night. It's on it? Wednesday, right. so a midweek game. Um, so we'll be back next week to kind of review that and look back and at we'll, that and hopefully we'll chat about We'll be playing Tony Watt oh, <laughs> again. <laughs> yeah. oh, no, oh, he's no, at Dundee United. He's signed for Dundee United, so ah, we'll not be playing Tony Watt. Right. Um, but hopefully we'll be set talking about uh, Martin Boyle signing a new 10-year deal to keep him forever. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, that'll be his wife, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, um, 11 o'clock at night. Uh, I, I doubt you've got much plans for the night, just heading to bed. I'll be sitting here for a wee while. Aye, having a few more drinks. Ah, just well, some Monday night. I'll just chill out. Aye. I'll be, uh, Peaky Blinders. Aye. Maybe see. Uh, maybe see. You said you were watching that from the start again, weren't you? Yeah. Aye. So I might see Joe Newell on it tonight. <laughs> 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 no, I've just I've started watching the uh, Peaky Blinders because it's coming back on again. Right. Uh, so what I just I thought I'll just start watching series one. Nice. And I'm on a uh, series three now. Mm. Um. So yeah, I'm enjoying it again. Just. It's, it's good to see a bit of Arthur Shelby. <laughs> uh, uh, my, my brother's... I, I should listen to it. My brother's been telling me to watch it forever. And You've never seen it? I've never seen it, but I need oh, to watch gav, it. Oh, gav, 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 gav. I like Silly Murphy too. I've no reason not to watch it. I probably should. Um, ah, but yeah. No, it's... I, I just... I'd spend, I, I'm like, right, I should probably start a new TV series. And then I like watch old wrestling. I started watching Raw from the beginning again, like 1993. You know, Bret Hart's world champion. It's great. Uh-huh. Um, better di- better times. Um, but yeah, so I, um, that's that's what I do in my time. I kind of watch old wrestling or watch current wrestling. I just ah, I need I do I need to, I do I do need to get out of it and, and well, watch try new series. I just watched uh, one. Stay close, right? Um, and um, three quarters of there on safe, right? To Netflix, so mm. they're really good. So uh, there's, there's so many on Netflix. I fancy there's the um, Jason Bateman one, which um, I can't. Uh, Ozark I quite fancy oh, that yeah, yeah. I've seen the boys talking about Yellow Jacket which I've no idea about but it's apparently mm-hmm. good I should probably check out that and I, I go right I should start these shows and then I watch Daredevil again because you know there's everything going on with that or mm-hmm. I go back and watch old wrestling well I should I, if you want to let me know what other shows I should be watching and, and, and I'm not uh, at HSC Talk or you know well, uh, at GavCW90 but I'm telling you now you've got to watch Peaky Blinders because it's coming back on and it's the last it's the close it's the last episode. So they say. No, Don't money it, them. no, no. It, it is, and I think it will be because um, Helen McCrory, um, Polly, right, uh, Aunt Polly, oh, yeah, she yeah, she just died. Yeah, 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 I heard about she, that. Yeah. She just died a few, oh, about six months ago or so. So um, I think that's why it's taken so long to come to the fore again. Um, anyway, uh, Gav, 
Christ, Peaky Blinders is about ten year old. Yeah. Watch it, and you'll you'll be texting saying it's brilliant. Right, let let me know what I'm missing out on. Uh, my wee brother like, loves it, Dad, and he's a uh, he, he's called his um, dog Grace after it, and he said if you got a boy dog, he would call it what was the main catch name? Uh, Tommy. Tommy. I said he'd call it Tommy if you got a boy dog, but yeah. So Grace and aye. <laughs> Grace was a horse's name, and mm. and his wife. Yeah, aye. Right. After after the female, so yeah. Aye. So so Grace run at Epsom, <laughs> and his dog will run run at Epsom as well. <laughs> So yeah, um, let us know um, your thoughts on everything we've discussed today um, at HFC's Talk. Like I say, check out the podcast uh, we'll find out this week. Been a busy week from us, so get to be back after a bit of a break. Um, um, but yeah, we'll be back next week, as I said. Thanks again. Thanks, Papa Sue. Cheers, mate. Thanks for listening. <laughs>